Oh yeah, we're back. Oh, god damn it. Oh, what the hell, man? Oh, come on. I'm not gonna lose my Fuck! I don't know about you, but Ultra Kill's been on my radar for quite some time. Since first entered early access. Almost four years ago. Seriously? Almost four years ago? That long? Good god almighty, that's a long time. Passes of time aside, Ultra Kill is an interesting chimera of a video game. It's equal parts boomer shooter throwback, a modern movement shooter a la Doom Eternal and Titanfall, and character action game in the vein of Devil May Cry. Hell, it's to the point that the game's main website is called devilmayquick.com, and I just love that. Ultra Kill is being developed primarily by Arce Patala, known online as Akita, who serves as Ultra Kill's sole game designer, one of its two programmers, one of its two writers, and its lead composer. Dude wears a lot of hats is what I'm saying. But it's not entirely his work. He's outsourced to several other developers to help him with the game's art and textures. And it clearly shows because it looks like the kind of game that you would rightly assume came out on the PS1 rather than something from 2020, and I mean that in the best way imaginable. To be fair, it's not out, out, and more launched into early access, out, but I'm wasting time because this game is gorgeous. The art direction works overtime to convey the different tone in each layer of hell. At one moment, it's all dark and ominous tech hallways, and then it's calm and serene gardens, and then it's a series of cool townscapes, and then it caps it off by being covered in bones and flesh and teeth. And this is only the first act of the game. This is the baseline of what we can expect out of this, and it's incredible. And this ties into what I can parse from the early narrative as well. From what I can glean going in completely fresh, the intro of Mankind is Dead, Blood is Fueled, Hell is Full, implies that there was a war between the humans and the machines that led to the humans getting wiped out, and the machines, being fueled by blood, went, ah shit, we're out of fuel, what are we gonna do? So they proceed to invade hell. Because what's more filled with blood than humans? Demons, that's who. You play as V1, one of these machines that are in search of that sweet, sweet blood. You are implied to be so bloodthirsty that your average corn worshiper with their calls of blood for the blood god would look at you and go, yo dog, tone it down. And that seems to be the basic gist of it so far. There's just enough there on the surface level to get you interested, but there's more to dig into if you look. Ultra Kill is a game that does its storytelling in the background and its environments. Quick aside, it's also a game that has copious amounts of blood. I'm talking like proteous amounts of blood here. It's red and geysery and it's all great. But now let's talk about the real reason I'm making this video. The gameplay. Oh my god, Ultra Kill is so fucking sick. This shit bangs. This shit fucking bangs. Fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Sorry about that, I... I seem to have lost my cool there. Back on topic, Ultra Kill Act 1, which I need to remind you is called Infinite Hyper Death, and that's fucking sick, starts with you dropping into hell with nothing but your fists. From there, it slowly ramps up in a series of acquired weapons and mechanics to the point of the game getting to the end of the first layer, and then it just goes, have fun. This is good because Ultra Kill throws a bunch of mechanics at you and gives you the basics. It's up to you to figure out how to best use these mechanics and the rest of your kit. And this isn't even getting into the full arsenal of weapons and gadgets. Act 1 gives you a pistol, a shotgun, a minigun, and a railgun. And you can parry projectiles. This includes your own. Is that not one of the coolest fucking things you've ever seen? Because it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen, hands down. Oh, and you get a second punch that lets you knock stuff away, but come on, it's not nearly as cool as punching your bullets. 
And you need cool shit like that because this game is hard. And that's not because I've played Act 1 on standard difficulty, which is technically hard. I went with that because Ultra Kill directly shouts out that this was the intended experience for first time players. And it shows because the game was kicking my ass when it first started. Compare this footage to when I first started. FUCK! To this. what a difference of a few hours makes and i genuinely mean a few hours because between playing through it fully and replaying specific parts of it for footage gathering and note taking it took me a little over eight hours to get through act one the scoring system works similarly to the devil may cry games in that your rank goes up depending on how much you vary your attacks when fighting going from d up to u or ultra kill and yes that includes s double s and triple s for good measure and I'm purposefully using footage to reflect that I'm not the best at this game because I'm still learning the ins and outs of the system and I haven't even unlocked all the other universal mechanics or the rest of the arsenal yet. Yes, this is still Act 1. The most recent update to Ultra Kill, which is coincidentally when I started playing this for the video, added the final chunk of the arsenal of the game. All the weapons I've mentioned have three variations to them that give them unique properties. The revolver has a charged shot, a ricochet shot, and the most interesting of the three, throwing coins to get automatic critical hits and the Johnny and Guilty Gear playing scumbag in me loves that shit. But I rarely end up using the revolver because this is the game that encourages you to get up close and personal, which is where the shotgun comes in. The shotgun is the most reliable source of bullet punching on your end and has a grenade launcher that can be charged, a pump that turns into a pump action shotgun that can do additional pumps for increased damage and spread at the cost of reduced accuracy, and if you pump too much, it'll explode in your face. And my personal favorite, the chainsaw bayonet. It's a chainsaw that you can charge and fire off like a rocket and use to cleave through guys. And you can punch it back and keep it flying indefinitely. getting into the tracer darts and overclock function on the minigun and the general absurdity of the railgun, which only has one shot that pierces through enemies but can only recharge when swapped out, the only instance of there being ammo in this game. 
I don't know what the red variation of the minigun does or what the rail gun variants do because I primarily use the shotgun like a basic bitch. And these are all needed to get that sweet, sweet blood. Because making enemies bleed is the only way to heal yourself from damage. No health pickups, no health upgrades, nothing. Just you, your guns, and the copious denizens of hell trying to stop you. And they do not make it easy for you. The enemies start as basic lower demons that just run at you all willy-nilly. And then they change up by introducing stronger variants that shoot at you. Giant statue-type enemies that earthquake all over the place. Masses of hideous mashups of stone and flesh. And then you start fighting your fellow machines for their blood and it's a goddamn free-for-all. And it escalates, introducing more and more enemy types for both machines and demons as you get deeper and deeper. This all crescendos with the final boss of Infinite Hyperdeck being a literal goddamn angel that may or may not be doing a ton of references to Virgil from Devil May Cry, but that wouldn't surprise me in the least. In this fight with Gabriel, the aforementioned literal goddamn angel, is the culmination of Ultra Kill's difficulty in Act 1. If you aren't on top of your game, you will get destroyed. He hits hard, moves fast, and constantly swaps weapons and is the final test of weapon swapping, enemy pattern recognition, and overall utilization of Ultra Kill's movement tech. Because you got dashes and a slide to keep you alive as well as other systems in place. It's a wild thing to experience for yourself as a first time player. All of this adds up to make Ultra Kill the kind of video game that I end up loving a lot of the time. Which is to say, very dense on the mechanics. I like having a bunch of stuff to juggle at the same time and Ultra Kill lets me do that. Even if it's limited form at this point, playing it feels like a goddamn dream. It quickly and efficiently gives you more and more new toys to mess with and see how they interact with both enemies and each other. I'm not gonna lie, as far as first impressions go, Ultra Kill has me by the goddamn throat and refuses to let go. I've been thinking about it in a way that I haven't thought about a video game in a very long time, and if there's one thing I've learned is that I gotta keep stuff like that close. Overall, Ultra Kill so far is shaping up to be something incredibly special, and I cannot wait for Imperfect Hatred to start. Like, I think I might do that after I push live on this video. Hey, this is post-production slash editing mo, and I forgot to do an outro for this video until roughly 10 after midnight when I'm putting this whole thing together, so... If you stuck around this long, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you could leave a like or even subscribe, share it around, it would mean so much to me. It's basically what keeps me doing this. I've been learning some new techniques, I've been learning DaVinci Resolve in order to make this video, and I also wanted to try my hand at making a longer form video, so if you could leave a comment with some feedback, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much for your time, and have a wonderful day.